Autism represents many symptoms which include behavioral tendencies. Some of these tendencies can lead to serious health and safety risk, including death. Far more severe treatment, like being locked in windowless cells or stuffed into bags. Now, some of the footage you're about to see is not easy to watch. Here's ABC's Brian Ross with a Nightline Investigates. This surveillance video shows a high school student by the name of Andre McCollins in the lower right of the screen, about to go through what his school calls skin shock therapy for misbehavior. <laughs> about 60 volts of therapy. There are no national standards for the punishments or restraints used on school children, including those like Andre with severe behavioral difficulties. Good morning, I'm here with Abby Campbell, a program coordinator at Hillcroft ABA Clinic where they specialize in applied behavior analysis working with children with autism. We're going to talk to her today about using restraints in the clinic. Abby, what's your policy here at the clinic on restraints? Um, we use restraints when a child is aggressive towards others or themselves and we use them once we see the need for them, we write a behavior intervention plan and share it with the family and it has to be approved by the parents and the BCBA before we will implement any um, restraints. Okay, what kind of restraints would be used if they were needed? Um, we use professional crisis management, um, ma <laughs> excuse me, sorry, crisis management restraints, so that includes prone immobilizations, um, transportations, one-arm wraps, um, they are all ABA-based though. Okay. We got a big problem to solve. Here's what I mean. If we take thousands of schools across the country and then add in disabled children, and then add in handcuffing those disabled children to their desks, and then add locking them in closets and bathrooms, and add restraining them to the point that they can't breathe, of course you gotta figure in duct tape that goes over their mouths, and then subtract proper training for special ed teachers and aides, minus cameras in the classroom, minus an adequate reporting system, minus state regulations. What does that equal? It equals the urgent need for federal laws that prevent harmful restraint and seclusion practices in our schools. A May 2009 government report cited hundreds of cases where disabled children either died, were abused, or emotionally traumatized from the use of dangerous restraint and seclusion practices in schools. But now, there's a federal bill to help protect our children. 
Ask your representative to co-sponsor S2020, the Keeping All Students Safe Act, by visiting nationalautism.org. We can help solve this problem. Visit nationalautism.org.